Hi guys, and welcome back to World of Tanks. Um, a slightly different video this time. Uh, what I'm going to try and do, she says nervously, is have a think about patch 9.5. Because as you, anyone who's um, seen my previous videos or listened to me rabbiting on, knows I do rather like British tanks. Yeah, I know that's not a British tank, I know it's a Sherman. Um, but obviously it's the closest thing we've got in game to uh, the one of the much awaited tanks in this new line, the Firefly. But what I thought I'd do is try and think about um, what you're likely to expect in, so in terms of levelling and what we know or what we think we know. For the record, I've just put quite conveniently a uh, entry up today talking about the new 9.5 changes or the new taxi 9.5. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised with a couple of things they're saying in there but and I am wondering whether there'll be other links um, than those that for the record are mentioned. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether it's exactly as for, for the record or put it all be slight changes. Uh, for those who haven't seen it we've got the M2A4 um, at tier 2 we've got a steward at tier 3 uh, I'm not really going to think about those too much but they'll be f you know we've got lots of stewards in the game it, you know look at a tier 3 steward and that's more or less what you're going to get the grant again look at the Lee and you're talking almost identical tank the shape will be slightly different if they model it correctly the armour should be slightly better on ours because one of the things the British specified on the grant was that the armour should be th um, thicker should have a different top turret. The guns guns will be exactly the same uh, because the Grant was the first of the British tanks to go straight onto the 75mm um, gun with a better high, high explosive round. It, it'll be an inferior, it'll be exactly the same gun as the Lee, uh, or should be. Then you go to the Sherman 3, which um, will be similar to the well, it's an M4A3 uh, is the um, is the uh, desig you know the the, the desig designation that uh, uh, Sherman three is an M4A3, uh, which I'm just trying to remember. I think oh, wait, M4A3. <sighs> It's a welded hull, so it'll be um, similar to the Easy 2 or even the Easy 8, which I've got in the picture. So I'd expect something this shaped. Um, and the guns, quite possibly, will be exactly the same. So the, 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 the Sherman, it's, I would expect an Easy 2 rather than an Easy 8 because of the armour. Uh, the Easy 8 obviously has got heavier armour. With essentially the same options that a... Um, that the cast Sherman has that the Americans use. I might be completely wrong there. That's just my guess. Um, part uh, it won't now. The easy two obviously goes up to the GAA. Doing some research, the uh, British never actually fielded the GAA, so you might find it'll be. Or well, the way I do it is that it'll be the, that it'll be. This hull that you see on the screen now, the Easy 2 hull, but with the options in terms of gunnery and engines of standard Sherman. It'll also have standard Sherman suspension almost certainly because the HVSS suspension was never used by the British operationally. They did have a few tanks but they never used it operationally. Radios will all be British. Again, same with the Grant. Uh, so your radio op op options will be, you know, look for comparable tanks um, for the uh, tier fives, you know, things like the Crusader, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe even the Cromwell's um, radio options will be what you'll get on here. I know the Cromwell six, but you know, that's sort of where I'll be looking. So at this stage, you're talking very American in terms of what. You know, so there's not much crossover. Because one of the things to remember, and this is the point 
that sort of, oh, excuse me, that was my flat paper bank cluttered in the kitchen. Uh, one of the things to um, remember, or those who might be new to the British line, is that there's a lot of crossover between components. Um, there are exceptions, but really good examples are things like the Centurion. Um, if I look at the research tree and pick that ta that engine, it's on two heavies, two um, uh, medium tanks, and two artillery. So you've unlocked one, t and, and you get this throughout the British line. And in fact, that ta that uh, engine, you may well see on the Conways, on, on the two, there's effectively two Conways at nine and ten. Um, th those will be, or there's Conway and an FV4004, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, FV4004 Conway and the FV4005 Conway Stage 2. I think that's the full designation of those two tanks. They will almost certainly use that tank. So you'll see two more, and you know, users of that engine. Uh, and it's the same with things like the guns. Although the guns get interesting, we'll go into those in a bit more detail. But if we just look at the type, tw you know, the uh, twenty pounder Type A, Carnarvon Conqueror, you know, four four of those tanks use the same engine. You get this crossover a huge amount, and this is the reason that I've decided to do this video is that if you think about okay that's going to come from there you can actually sort of should be able to do a certain amount of preparation which will make your grind in this line quicker um, or even doing it the other way you might prefer this line but actually think well actually I like a centurion if I go to the city you know can I do stuff out of the new TD line that will make my life in the centurion easier to a degree the answer will be definitely yes um, so that's the Sherman dealt with the next option I'm clicking on the Centurion to give you one of the examples uh, the next one up is of course the Firefly the one that we're all waiting alongside the Firefly is also the Archer and this is where we're talking about the weapons where it gets a little bit interesting we're going to get that gun 17 pounder it's not a Firefly without it this uh, in, in, in some of the areas that he gets used in the game it feels underpowered which is a shame because this was the best or certainly one of the best anti-tank guns in World War II. It was better than the 88s, it was at least comparable, possibly slightly better to the long 75s on the Panthers. That's how good a gun this is uh, in, in reality but because of the way that the matchmaking or the matching as, as, as War Game went to do the matching I've mentioned it before, things like the Matilda goes up against two years newer tank destroyers, for instance. Um, this is often goes up against tanks that are a bit too tough for it because they're newer tanks. But this is the gun that will go on the Firefly in Tier 6. So when you get to Centurion, if you, if you unlock the Firefly and the 17-pounder, you've instantly got the gun for the Black Prince, the the stock gun for the Carnarvon, not as very good stock gun, and the second gun, the Centurion. What you won't have is the gun for the Archer. And this is where Wargamer have pulled a, a slight fast one. And I'm making an assumption based on what they've done up to now. And that is, if you look at the... Oops. There's the AT-7 which has got the 17 pounder which statistically will look exactly the same as the uh, Centurions but it's the 17 pounder AT gun mark 7 on the AT-15, AT-8, AT-7 and almost certainly the Archer and the Achilles so this gun, this version of the gun, so if you've already unlocked the AT-7 and maxed it, so you've got the 17 pounder. Well, he's not even maxed, I think, to get the 17 pounder. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, you can get 20 pounder 80 uh, barrel on it, or even the 88. I think, as I say, use it. So if you, yeah, if you've maxed out the 88 with the, with the 17 pounder, you've automatically should have the top gun to both the Archer and the Achilles at tier five and tier six straight away. 
Uh, and the groin's not bad. Uh, the 88's a bit of a wonky tank, but the 82's a nice tank, so, um, you, you know, go up to the 82, and, okay, it's not the same style of play as the Archer and the Achilles, although, in some respects, it's not far off, because the Archer won't be that mobile. Um, you just, you just can't, it's just going kind to of armour either, so it's not like a tank that you can just blast through stuff, but it's, um, you know, likely to be uh, sniping with it a bit. So, no, okay, completely different play style. Ignore me. <laughs> but the AT2 is a nice tank, is, is an interesting tank, and it's, you know, it's not a bad grind to go through the AT2, uh, and that can get, you know, get yourself up to the 17 pound, and it then makes these easy. Or you could look at the other way. You could do the Archer, so, right, I, I actually, you know, my go through down there is quite like a, 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 I wouldn't mind both the tier 10 tank, uh, British tank destroyers. But because the, the 9.5 is around the corner, I'll actually stop at the AT2. Then I'll get the Archer, max that out, get the 17 pounder on the Archer, and I've instantly got the gun for the AT8. And this is sort of what I'm trying to get you to think about. And the purpose of this video is, is looking at sort of the crossover between the current line and the old line. The Achilles, that'll be an M10, so going back to the Americans, so just look at the M10 and anything common between the M10 and the Sherman or the Grant. If there's anything common between those apart from the radios, of course, expect that kind of crossover. As I say, this is based me looking at Wargaming's record and how they've treated the British in the past, using that speculate I'm speculating I'm basing this purely on intuition nothing else I'm not any inside knowledge or anything like that the next one up is the challenger this is interesting I'm wondering whether the challenger will actually come from two routes uh, by the way it's been said that the archer is going to come off the Valentine whether the Valentine will lose its route into the Churchill at the same time I don't know but you might find that the Valentine actually gives you three tanks off it and then the Achilles comes off the um, Valentine, but could also come off the Sherman. I, the thing that surprised me is that they would well, have put the M2A4 on the Stuart in. I, was, I thought the Grant might come off something like the Valentine or the Matilda, because that's what it effectively replaced in combat. Um, as far as I know, they haven't done that, but it would be interesting to see if they put a little extra... Co uh, you know, there's lots of little permutations of taking of alternate routes that this line has because say you can take the Achilles off a of Sherman 3 it sort of makes sense they're both American uh, whereas the Archer and the Achilles only have a 17 pounder gun in common with each other so next one up is the Challenger and this again is a tank that could come from two routes the official route it'll be coming through the Firefly it could come off the Cromwell uh, it's tier 7 so it could go from here and down and then you'd also have the, the main arc. Whether it well I don't know, but there's every there's no reason why not to. What would I expect to see on this? I'd probably expect it to start as a, a stock Cromwell pretty much. Uh, or the the crop the, the Challenger's hull is actually an a one road wheel extended Cromwell. A bit like I think the KB two twenty is the same, it's a, a one road wheel extended KB one. So it's longer, but if I was sort of starting the line and I wanted them to grind a bit, I would start it with the Challenger hull with the Cromwell turret and then with probably just starting with the um, 75 HV just to give it a bit of a grind. They, they may just give you the top turret and the top gun or they might give you the top turret, but you have to do the 75 or the 77 is another option. Um, these kind of guns, but again, now, the, the way it'll get interesting is whether that's going to be treated as a tank destroyer or a tank, because it's a tank. <laughs> the turret's fully uh, rotating. It is not a turreted tank destroyer, it is a tank. Um, it went into pride, uh, it's, it's sort of primary role, I suppose, was a tank destroyer, in that it went into provide extra firepower but it's it's no different to the Firefly the Challenger in a way is a Firefly Cromwell so really it should be done as a tank so 
I don't know where the, where the £17 for the Challenger will come from. It'll either come from the Arch and the Achilles or, and, and the ATs, or it'll come off the Firefly. It'd be interesting to see how Wargaming do that. It could come from either route. Engines, that kind of thing, from the Cromwell here. So things like, and, and you've got the meat, you've got top meteor there, which again, as you can see, that you know, just kind of add extra um, uh, vehicles into there. Charioteer, I'll share, share these because again, the Charioteer is another Cromwell-based vehicle that is a TD. That will use the twenty pounder. Whether it will use the twenty type, well, let's have a look. It could use the twenty pound. It's going to be tier eight. Yes, but it, it should be. It's going to have the two seventeen pounders. Almost certainly, it's going to be a bit of a grind. Whether they'll start it on the seventeen pounder, I don't know. Uh, obviously, I'm guess. I, you know, I'm basing this on what was the original tank. You know. War games wish to give you a bit of a grind. I would, I would actually expect you to see that it'll have one turret and two guns, the Type A and the Type B. Um, and Type B is worth getting because it gives you extra uh, accuracy and stuff like that. And because it's more of a sniping TD, it's going to be, um, it, it's going to need the extra gun handling and the extra accuracy for you, to help you at longer ranges. Um, the next one up is the, is the first of the two Con Conways, and here you, you can look at the um, Centurion. So look at the options on the Centurion. I don't know whether it based, whether it, I'm guessing it's more of a Centurion Sem One because it was a later development. Um, so the Sem One's probably what it would be based on. Engines will be shared, radios will be shared. It's the 120. Um, is the normal gun for the level nine so it's the, that should be the same gun as the tortoise whether they give you a grind into a gun on that don't know um two options for that the 32 pounder or they could bring in the 105 both of which are sort of viable um none of the british tds use the 105 so be, I, I'd expect if they give you a grind on that gun-wise, it'll be the 120. And then the last one is the Stage 2, which again is Centurion with a uh, 183. Exactly the same gun as the um, FE, FE 215183. Um, so both of these are going to be more mobile. Expect I would expect a 40k K top speed, the same as the Centurions, same engines, uh, same radios, guns as per the Tortoise and the uh, 183. Rates of fire, uh, it'll be interesting to see what the rates of fire are like. Um, things like the Challenger, sorry, Charioteer at tier 8, is it's going to be interesting to see how that goes up against the AT-15. The AT-15 has got a really good rate of fire, but the Charioteer has only got a two-man turret. So you're going to have driver, commander gunner, or sorry, commander loader, gunner radio operator. So it's going to have a slightly funky cr crew, and assuming they match it to real life, uh, I don't think the charity. I'm just going to check one thing. Actually, just bear with me. I don't. I'm pretty confident the charity literally was a three-man crew. Uh, I know it was. A, I know it was a, a, a two-man turret. Um, two-man turret. It might be a four-man crew. Uh, let me, I. I'm just looking at Wikipedia. Wikipedia is usually quite good for little bits of specific information like that. Um, yeah, a couple of the links off is, uh, isn't uh, isn't helping. So no, I, I'm afraid I don't know whether that's likely to be a three or a four. Um, the Cromwell, of course. 
was Oops. get to the right place. Oh, by the way, new rack, new headset. Um, I don't know how my voice is compared to the old one. Right, Cromwell is a crew of five, so it's going to be a crew of four. You got, you'll, you'll have radio operator in the hole, driver in the hole, and then loader commander and a gunner. And that's basically sort of so. You can see where I'm coming from the different links. You can see that. Because of the crossover, you might want to start. What you know? What, what if I was going to wanted to do? You know, I was interested in th this line. What would I be doing right now if I didn't have any Brits? I'll be doing the British medium line up to the Centurion Seven One. It's worth going for the FE Four Two Hundred Two because you get another Centurion at the end. But um, the, it's a it's a really good line. It's it's probably the best medium line in the game. Uh, I'm not saying every medium tank is the best medium for its tier but there isn't a bad medium amongst them even the 402 is the bad medium it's not the best of tier 10 but it's not a bad medium the crusader is a light tank but is effectively a medium in all but name and that's not a bad tank either um, some people don't like it but because it's a light you can hide and still engage targets that they can't see you even if you you know even with things like the camo ballot ban thing so i would definitely go all the way up the centurion line that will give you the i'll say will my guess is it will give you all all the engine options the um tier 9 and 10 it will give you the gun options for the firefly Possibly the gun options for the Challenger. Um, and most of the radios that you're going to need. And a lot of the engines. Uh, and then I would go up and do the Valentine. Get the Valentine. Get about 15k XP in the Valentine. And you should then be ready for the Archer. Um, if, depending on which way you want to do it. If you want the 17 pounder ready, then you're going to have to do the 88. And the 88 itself is a bit meh. Um, the 87 after it I quite like, but the 88 is a bit, because it's, it's got weird gun arrangement. The 87, you can hide around corners and can actually have quite fun games in it. I've got some mon monster uh, steel walls in that by getting just the gun around the corner and I'm engaging targets and just sitting there and blasting away at them. Um, but the 88 is a bit mere, so you may or may not want to do that, you may want to wait, but at least if you've got the archer unlocked, you can go straight to the archer. You can then get the 17 pounder for the Achilles, possibly uh, the 17 pounder for the Challenger, possibly the 17, sorry, for the, it'll be the 17 pounder for the Achilles, it might, you know, I don't, it'll be interesting to see what they start the charity on, I would have thought they'd just do the 20 pounders on the charity, so, and it, it, oh, it'll be a 17 pounder for the challenge if the challenge is a medium but by going through the centurion line you've covered both bases so you, you know um, by the time you get to the challenge if you've done the archer and done the firefly you've got 17 pounder in both you've got the 17 pounder for the challenger um, but by doing the centurion line you've got the 17 pounder for the firefly or should have assuming that all this is based on war, war, a bit of consistency from wargaming wargaming consistent this is what i would expect anyway that's sort of what i'm thinking what i'm going to be doing is playing a bit of my valentine um thank you uh to try and get up i'm going to i've had to start a new crew um through through a um 100% commander in just so it was a uh, not so much it's tolerable this is not a bad little tank but the you know the bonus you get from having a 100% commander uh you know I've got 92% on these two the, the reload's a bit slow on try not to spend money on getting uh, that up but anyway I hope you found this useful um and I think you know I like the British line anyway but anyway so yeah Quick recap, 
do get up to at least Centurion 7 1 maxed and Valentine with 15k XP in it and you've probably got most of the uh, weapon options for everything from the Challenger to the end the art to the Achilles weapon options you'll have the gun for the Firefly in theory but the rest you'll have to grind so you'll have to grind the M204, the Stuart, the Grand, the Sherman you obviously have to grind the XP unless you've got free XP to get into the Achilles you may have to grind some modules in that depending on what the crossover is back to the Firefly and the Sherman which is say you can look by looking at the, M the M8, M10 and the Sherman on the, on the American line I I'd expect that to be roughly the same and basically it should make your grind a lot easier uh, and if you want to you know it's what I'll be doing um, I've got most you know most of this is unlocked for me anyway but I'll be putting 15k XP into the Valentine over the next couple of months and therefore hopefully we'll be able to get the Archer and the Archer of I like the Archer for those who don't know the Archer is a backwards uh, TD a bit like the Cruiser Crusader SP um, it'll be very much a sniping um, TD uh, probably have a, re a similar angle of view to the Electo uh, and very much a tank you know you'll play it probably very similar to the Electo won't be as quick but you'll be able to you'll uh, I'd expect reasonable camo, camo values is coming off this light tank and you'll be able to go up between you know I'll be hidden behind a rock hull down or something like that just to make it harder for people to hit, hit you and then you can just back away from one you know if you spot them and things like that uh, so it'll be interesting tank to play the Achilles will play like the M10 just with different gun. anyway Hope you found this useful and I shall speak to you soon. Ta-ra.